economy, which was bringing together on one side the economic development and on the other side the social development. And I went to her homepage, and what you find there is a whole set for teachers, how you can actually explain the donut economy, how you can make up models together and start discussions on really, really deep inside materials. So if you want to have that in your classroom, just go on her page, look for the videos, and it explains very, very well there. And Kate Roberts is a beautiful person who's explaining in stories. So just be curious and check it out, and maybe there's something in there you might like to use in your classroom trainings or you want to use it in remote trainings. This is said about uh, the uh, social developments. Yesterday, I was talking about the Drawdown Project. Uh, the Drawdown Project with 150 uh, scientists from all over the world came together and rethinking what can we do for the environment to stop the climate heating. I'm not talking about climate change, actually. It's the climate heating what we're experiencing at the moment. And by the way, maybe you have heard, read it on the news. Um, in the Arctic area, we've got now 35 to 38 degrees Celsius at the moment. It's incredible, just up in Siberia. So there is something going on, something very deeply. And if you go to the Drawdown project page, um, you'll find a connection there for teaching collections. And again, in there, you find a whole stack of material you can use for your lessons or for, for your lectures. It starts from videos, uh, graphs, and everything is provided there. And you can reach out to the team there and ask questions and maybe to adjust the knowledge they have to your area and your questions. So the Drawdown Project is a huge resource pool all around um, the environmental development stuff. And uh, you might like to dive into that. Because, of course, um, the claim we have to follow is make climate great again, not someone else. <laughs> So let's dive into that and get our students involved into this thinking and presenting them perfect material, very good based and research to help our students to understand. So that's one, you know, just an idea for this environmental space. There are loads and loads and loads of stuff on this, on this side as well, on, on, on our pages as well. And of course, uh, when we look at, uh, for example, the Green Deal we were talking America. yesterday mm -hmm. and uh, huge developments which are available there and the job opportunities, they are coming up there. Just uh, YouTube. YouTube is full, full of material, well-researched, some, <laughs> some not. But you have to you know, just dig into that and find your way through. And by the way, I've got a son, he's 17, and... Um, Joshua is his name, and he learns most of his stuff out of YouTube and podcasts. So when I ask him anything, he says, oh, yeah, I've seen a video about that, and I rechecked, double-checked, because he knows that I'm working in the journalism context, and double-check is better there. You have to have two independent sources for that. So, um, But he, he does that. So YouTube is a huge resource pool for teaching material. And it's mostly, mostly in this language that our next generation understands. Not everything what we talk about is in the language that the generation Z is really listening to. Okay, let's connect that. Okay, manage the unknown. That's what we are facing and the careers of the future do not yet exist. So let's... Let's invite our students to move into that and find out. And for the skills, I want you now to take you through a trip, through a lot of tools I found, I came across, and see whether they are applicable for you or not. So we started with collaboration is the new oil, mastering complexity, kickstart curiosity, confidence instead of ignorance, and coding is key. And let's see what tools and materials are around. So collaboration is the new oil. What is there? 
Duplicate well, sound art. I might start at the bottom left. Maybe duplicate sound art. What you see there is Lego. You probably know the bricks. And there are sets put together. They're called Lego Series Play. And Lego Series Play helps us along to develop and envelop knowledge. Like, for example, I was working with Lego Series Play to get of the users of broadcast of today. So we put that together as the management team, played literally with Lego, and started to understand at what kind of surrounding they are living, what their main focus are, and not what our focus is, but what their focus is. So Lego Series Play is a beautiful tool set you can use in the classroom to explore connections between systems, for example. Um, this is not an online tool, of course, this is a uh, on-stage place, but it's a perfect thing. And the, the nice thing about uh, teaching with Lego is you have some haptic exchange going on. And I was actually having a workshop one day uh, with uh, the BMW Financial Services and um, the bankers. And then I said, okay, let's, let's have a look at what your business is. And uh, I started to unpack the Lego. And they said, Woo, we are not kids. We're not playing around with Lego. Well, guess what? At 10 o'clock at night, they were still discussing with these Lego figures what the next approach would be to support uh, sustainable or uh, EV cars in the market. And you can do that with the kids. They will love it. From there up, you see the Fab Lab. The Fab Lab is an institution which actually offers a set of tools where you can um, have the connection between teamwork and materials and new, pro new production uh, infrastructure. For example, in these traditional Fab Labs, and you might check out the pages which is behind there, they have 3D printers. And 3D printers will, you know, really reshape economy in the future. So having, for example, in Don Bosco at the college in future, a 3D printer sitting around and the kids can start to play around with it and to develop their own projects. And there's a whole tool set behind that. So just check out the Fab Lab movement as a maker space, which is beautiful. Um, you see down there on the middle side, real life examples of design thinking in the classroom. Well, um, design thinking is a model which was developed uh, actually in Palo Alto uh, by a company called IDEO. And they were applying the design thinking um, uh, methods to real life problems. So just dive into this world if you like to. You can do that online as well. There are a lot of tools around for uh, online design thinking methods. And uh, what they do is they offer you a way to solve real-life problems. To do all that, it obviously helps to have a student collaboration tool set and uh, I will send you after the session all the links so you can dig dive into that as well and on this link uh, you find with the green bar you will find uh, a common sense education and there are stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of tools behind there how you can foster and uh, emerge collaboration while the people are not in the classroom but outside. As we said, one of the keys for uh, this um, collaboration is, is to develop or one? to have empathy. Oh, okay. And uh, for doing so, model, we've got there. on the right-hand side the empathy yeah. map. And what does the empathy map do? It yeah, helps yeah. us to understand what the other person is really thinking, feeling, hearing, saying, doing, seeing, what their pains are, what the gains are. So... If, um, I do a lot of the workshops together with people, and I, before I start them, Italian. okay, yeah, let's this one. put or let's put the so empathy map together, yeah. and to understand the other person which is on the other side of the call, for example. Brand. What does this person think and feel? 
What does this person see? What does they hear? What do they say and do? And what are their pains and what might be their gains? And if you do that frequently, you start to train your empathy a lot. Those who are watching YouTube, please put your name. On the bottom right, um, there is another tool. Again, it's about um, empathy and understanding and uh, understanding the other person. Um, and this is a tool actually which has two sides on a coin, on two sides of the coin. Because what does it do? It is, it is an app you can download on Google Play, Stay, Play, Play Store. And uh, what you can do is uh, having this camera working and this camera is detecting the emotions of the person in front of you. It's based on the research of uh, Paul Ekman and he came up with uh, that all over the world we've got seven very clear emotions you can detect in a face, mostly supported by facial micro-movements. And uh, these movements are showing you uh, what kind of emotion the person in front of you has, even though it might try to hide it, like shock or fear, joy. And uh, you might have a look into uh, content, for example. So you might have a look into that, and uh, it's a training tool, so you can train and detect much faster uh, the emotions in the face of your opposite person. But as well, you know, this technology has another side as well, and we will see that later, because uh, this could be applied as well in classrooms, and what that could lead to is a different story. Okay, so these are a few things about uh, collaboration. Let's move on to mastering the complexity. And we had this, we need new agile movements to work forward, new product manage, uh, uh, project management tools. We had the Snowden diagram, we had the scenario development process and the dealing with ambiguity. And here are again some tools I found. Um, I might start again on, oh no, no, this time I start on the right hand side. Um, when you see no there, password is it's required. Uh, Recycle log, uh, City. Log in. No, just Recycle log in. City is a simulation you can download uh, in the academic and uh, develop Sarah the Sentinel. trash recycle infrastructure there, for a city there. Dot Google, dot and com. you can do that in teams as well. You click that. So having you know teams playing then, together uh, this join. game, it's a gamification okay, of learning, what's okay, happening there, the and it's it a simulation, and it shows you what kind of impact you have when you have more trucks or more power stations and all that, and you can invest or de-invest. So you do really get a feeling of uh, what impact your uh, your your um, ideas have or your contribution have to the recycle system. Moving to the middle, to Loopy. Loopy is a crazy stuff, absolutely crazy stuff. Loopy is a simulation, which is uh, actually an open source simulation platform. And you can play and develop thousands of examples of system thinking there. You can go into some topic fields like basic ecology, depression and anxiety, or automotive, automotion, automation and job losses. And then you can put the system together and see how these systems are interacting with each other. It's a tremendous tool to understand system thinking. Right, on the left-hand side, you see an example for uh, scenario planning. And uh, this is, again, a template, downloadable, and you can develop according to your subject. Oh, this is a plane flying across here. Um, you can develop scenario technologies on these templates to understand the impact of your uh, ideas. Below that, you see from Google. Google is a huge source uh, for learning. And uh, there is one, it's learn about agile project management. I was talking about that before. And it's open and free. So you can actually do that together with this tutor and 
present that in your class, going through the steps together and to, to discuss the material is provided by Google on that. Okay. Another option is to dive into the thinking in complexity is massive open online courses like the one we have down below. It's for free. And there you can train, you are trained for thinking and complexity. So, going into the net, going into the web and exploring there, you find millions of tools there. It's just a collection I curated there. I don't say this is the best, but they're really interesting working. And what I really love is the looping. I might continue. Kickstart Curiosity. Kickstart Curiosity, we said, exploring the unknown is helpful deep, to provide deep immersions, fostering curiosity, and thank God I made a mistake. What is there around? Well, on the bottom left, uh, you see a shark. And actually, this shark is sitting on my sofa. It's not really sitting there. It's sitting there because I use yeah. augmented reality for that. And there's a beautiful yeah. tool uh, to provided uh, again from Google. It's called Google Explore. Okay. And if you can uh, download yeah, this app, you can put uh -huh. whatever uh -huh. you want to have into your place and to explore there. Like the shark. What is a shark looking like? You can walk around this shark. You can go under the shark. You can look at the teeth and you get even some information. I put for the other side like the Hubble telescope on my kitchen table there. Um, how is that? Having the Hubble telescope just sitting in front of me and I can walk around it with my, uh, with my smartphone. It's tremendous. It's really opening up the eyes and getting the understanding what's there and a lot of people are contributing now to these platforms to having these AR augmented reality materials sitting on those desktops and you can really explore and go into it. I had the uh, a, uh, nuclear power station sitting on my uh, desktop and I was walking around this uh, nuclear power station and you can do that by the way again with your class as well simultaneously. Um, okay. Then we've got in the middle the green and this is a nice story behind that. Um, when I started working with uh, EDG, the Enterprise Development Group, uh, I went over to Palo Alto where our head office or in our garage is and uh, Herman uh, the founder of EDG, said, well, we should go to Palo Alto High School. And I said, why is that? You know, we've been to all these techie places like Google, Facebook, Cisco, whatever. And he said, no, 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 Let, let's go. Let's go to Palo Alto High School. There's a lady called Esther Wojcicki. Mm -hmm. And let's go and visit her. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Excellent. And uh, I came into this room and it, wasn't, it didn't look like a school at all. It looked like a TV studio, actually, mm -hmm. and this is the place yeah. I know a lot about TV studios. So uh, I said, well, well, this is not a school. Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, it is. Because what is this school based on? How, they have how, how, how decades how being you know? as journalists on the way. And as a journalist, you dive really into the topic. Oh, and lovely. it's amazing how this the kids are getting really, really deep into mind. knowledge about this the subjects goes. they are investigating at. So they've got the natural science yeah, channel there, of course. And they've got a radio station about um, British lyrics. And they've got a, 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 a newspaper they no. print there mm -hmm. uh, that's about politics. Mm -hmm. And it's all written mm -hmm. and done by the students. Mm -hmm. And they have mentors at the site, so they can call up and say, um, I'm not sure about this, but uh, do you know any university professor who could provide blah, blah, blah? And these mentors are connecting to the network they have, and it's growing. It's now there for 20 years, and it's most impressive what's happening in these studios. And actually, when you talk about TV studios, in former times, they were really, really expensive. Nowadays, you can do that virtually for 200 bucks. To have you some green stuff hanging in the back, having a smartphone working and a microphone, and then you're set up already. And that, of course, triggers curiosity. 
and understanding the world with the kids. A nice side effect of that is I saw Esther teaching there and I said, well, Esther, how do you teach now 120 kids at the same time? And she said, I don't teach. So, so what do you do? Well, I let the kids teach each other. And that's exactly what was happening. So there was a lot of peer coaching going on, peer teaching going on, and Esther was sort of more of a facilitator in this class. Very interesting concept. By the way, uh, <laughs> she is the mother of Susan Wojcicki, and Susan Wojcicki is happening to be the CEO of YouTube. Thank you. Yes, put a question. So she was obviously able to raise a daughter with a lot of curiosity and uh, a lot of impact to the world. Okay, on the right-hand side, you see a page, and maybe we can share that later. Uh, it's about Google experiments, and it's the World Museum. And what you can do there is actually dive into culture. Very, very emotional, very, very nicely done in graphics. And you can do a virtual tour through history and seeing the artifacts which are done there in these times and having some more information about that. And on the left-hand side, um, there is a tool as well provided by Google, by Google AI Experiments. And uh, what you can do there is with the coastline paradox, you actually connect Google Earth with the figures of the climate change or the climate warming. And you can see the sea level rises and you can launch experiments there. And when you get on this page of Google experiments, AI experiments, I promise you, you will get stuck there. It's amazing what kind of projects are there. You can do a, a dance and moving words on the screen. You can uh, play a philharmonic orchestra. You can play around the globe with someone, um, the crosses and the zeros. So it's amazing. It's just a whole world opening up there. And a lot of enthusiastic uh, programmers are sitting obviously around there and providing new cool stuff. Okay. Going ahead. From confidence, confidence instead of ignorance. So what did we have there? The... Background for that is giving feedback, supporting self-effectiveness, and uh, discover your strengths. And yes, all that so, you can so do. Jan, sorry for interruption. Uh, yes. Some are not able to see the screen. Can you start once again here at this point? Stop and start. Stop screen and start once again. Okay. Yeah. I Thank you. It. I, I stop it and start again. Is that what you want? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So. Yep. When did it? When did it stop? Uh, Some time back. I think somebody pressed somewhere in between. Okay. Somebody altered it. Two, three minutes before. Okay. I will try again. Yep. Is it now there? It is there. You are there. Yep. Is it visible? Yes, visible, sir. Excellent. Okay, so some tools uh, around confidence. Um, we had these three major parts there, which was about strength, feedback, and self-efficiency or self-efficientness, self-effectiveness. And actually, you've got tools there as well. So there's a strength explorer discovering the kids' undeveloped talents. What you do there is you provide kids with questions. It's a download tool again. And uh, out of that, they will come up with around 36 talents and um, uh, strengths that people have. And you get a strength report. And uh, they will end up with five major talents. And the kids can start to communicate about that. It's a beautiful tool. I use the, the version, okay. version for adults uh, in management training a lot. So we start not to talk about our weaknesses. Now we're starting to talk about our strengths and talents. Right. 
So this is available for kids as well. Um, then there is an uh, uh, open source uh, learn giving by giving feedback. It's a tool again. It helps you how to formulate feedback, how you do it, how you share it. And you can do it for the kids. The kids can do peer grade, peer grade feedbacks. It really helps you along to learn together. And it's not about, oh, you made a mistake. No, it's about what did I see? What happened with that? What kind of feeling came out of that? What do we need next? And uh, this tool actually was developed by a teacher because uh, he, his classes were growing and growing and growing. He just said, how can I give everybody feedback? I can't. So he started to get the students, the peers, to give feedbacks to their peers. And that's why he developed this tool, how to do it. And the bottom on the right-hand side, four ways to improve and increase self-efficiency. It's uh, from the Society of Positive Psychology. And it's like a questionnaire which helps you along in a daily kind of routine to reflect what you do daily, what was helpful, what was not really helpful, and what helps you to make out of that a lessons learned and to get self-confident. It's a beautiful tool. I know a lot of teachers are using that already. So this is available for free. Just download it and use it. And you can share it with your students, of course. That's the basic idea behind that. So, some tools around confidence. Because confidence is much more important than ignorance, and we see a lot of ignorant people tra tragically around in the world, and uh, actually some of them are very powerful, which does not really help. You'll get them. We'll Yesterday, I was telling the story about uh, my so colleague who came around and said, I want to read out a poem to you. And she was a nerd. She was a programmer. And I said, well, how, how does it work? And she said, well, this, this code actually is a poem and it steers a robot. And actually, that's what you can learn. It's source code poetry or learning to code by writing code poems. Um, these are two actually pages, home pages or websites you can dive into. And what is behind that? Normally, coding is understood as something very theoretically, not haptical, and not really connected to our artist mind. But our artist mind is core to develop enthusiasm. Yeah, and this is a beautiful connection between having these very, very right. Uh, right, uh, left brain um, uh, activity like coding connected with the right brain hemisphere which is more uh, connected with uh, creativity so and this is a perfect match on that then uh, I came across the Young Coders Global Hackathon 2020 so what is that? Uh, this is a hackathon provided uh, by the coding lab and what do they do? They offer students challenges. And they invite challenges of students from all over the world to take part in these hackathons. Again, it's uh, for free and it's a shareware. And uh, so they, the people start, the students start to do hackathons there. And in these hackathons, yet you can actually have uh, diversity groups. So it's not important that you are with your students together or you're alone. You can actually invite people from other countries from all over the world together to work on real-life problems and doing the coding with that, learning the coding. Good evening to all. Honorable. In the middle, you see, yeah. focusing on more smaller kids, um, it's from MIT. And uh, the MIT was looking into is how do we get... Young kids getting connected with this digital world and how can they start to learn, but not by using smartphones or tablets or anything like that, but something which is haptical or nice and playful. And uh, there they're connected with the Montessori classroom um, approach, and maybe you know the Montessori approach. That's very haptical learning, and that's what they developed. The MIT developed a whole tool set coming with very helpful uh, haptical things. You can play around. You learn the coding basics, the zeros, the, the ones, the binary code, the, the decision trees, whatever you can do, and you can put it together and play around with it. 
So you can uh, get a basic understanding of what this yeah. computing is all about. Show something back. And last but not least, I will tell you, this is a runner. Um, <laughs> this yeah, course this on the right-hand side is how you can actually code your app and how to do it. Give that 14-year-old girls and boys, there's something going to happen, I tell you. That's pr provided again by Google. Right, so code is poetry. There are some entrances maybe to play around to have a tool set providing that. Now moving over to the uh, basic trends we had and we were discussing on Wednesday the end of distance from consumer AI to citizen AI, from the Internet of Things to the Internet of Thinking, from the silo solutions to the seamless solution journeys and from data addiction to data veracity. Again, I'm searching for some tools which are around these basic trends, and maybe they might fit for you, or maybe they might not, but just have a look. That was the basic trend. And here it is, the end of distance. Down there on the right-hand side, you see myself uh, on spatial I.O. What is spatial I.O.? Spatial I.O is an avatar meeting place. So all what you have to do is to take a picture of yourself and suddenly uh, you are an avatar and then you can go to your avatar room and start talking to people. You can invite your class actually and having avatars speaking to each other. No, it's still amazing. There's still not, it's sometimes a bit rocky and sometimes not really very smooth. But there's a lot of development happening now, and especially oh, now with uh, Beyond COVID, I bet there will be a huge development ah, coming on that screen. Still in the July Above that, uh, we come to Amazon. And Amazon provides an education service. As you can see, there's a, a signature education, AWS education. And on this platform, you get featured resources, and what kind of resources can you tap in there? You can actually yeah, program you your own Alexa mm -hmm. learning skills. Again, you can program there your own Alexa speech chatbot learning skills. It's amazing. So maybe there might be, again, this could be again for, for students, a terrific question or task or challenge and say, okay, let's think about how can we explain um, some mathematical problem. Hey, students, come together. Let's program now together as uh, a skill for Amazon Alexa. I'm going to get the technical slip. Oh, yeah. that is it's amazing what's all, already there, and I'm sure all the other devices are moving up to that. I'm sure that for Google the same uh, exists, and uh, I don't think for Apple, but at least for Android and Amazon. On the left hand side, you might have seen that already. That's the card box. What is the card box? That was the answer to. Um, Microsoft HoloLens. <laughs> Microsoft HoloLens is a very high sophisticated computer which you put on your head and you see virtual or augmented reality. Google turned around and said, well, a lot of smartphones are already able to do uh, AR, augmented reality. Why not using a card box, putting your smartphone in there and providing them, especially for kids, AR experiences. And they're available on the web for free. And uh, the car boxes, you can actually do, a, 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 you can download the description, the building description for them. So you have your own smart a smartphone AR device done from card box. And it costs you around, I don't know, 10 cents. <laughs> right, the end of distance. The trend we were talking about was as well from consumer AI to citizen AI. And there's a shift behind there. And uh, yes, a lot of things are happening in this field as well in teaching. I might start with the lower left. 
the first AI-powered adaptive education provider in China. It's Squirrel. And uh, Squirrel is opening up, actually, at the moment, on-premises AI-powered education rooms. And uh, what they do there is they map the knowledge of the learner at the beginning. They ask for the pace, as a, for, for the speed of learning. They see, they check out what kind of speed you have. And they ask you, of course, the destination, where you want to get there. And from there on, they provide for, I think, at the moment, 12 subjects, overall grades, complete learning solutions for that, based on AI. And AI, the machine, is learning from you how you learn, what your speed is, what your next step might be, and where your questions are. And then this is combined with a teacher running around in this room as well. And uh, so you have students learning at their own pace, but supported with a mentor, and you can ask directly questions. And this is core. Leaving students alone just with an AI tool to, to learn something, uh, we see there is a digital divide still happening. Um, that uh, people who are coming, or students who are coming from a well-educated background, they can very easily adapt to the questions they asked and reframe them and get on. But if people are coming not from a very well-educated background, they stop very easily and then they get frustrated. So this is not really helpful, but AI certainly is a huge power coming up there for learners and teaching. And again, China is there on the move, very strongly on the move. I don't know the developments at the moment in India, but I see most of the developments happening now in... Uh, got grass, the potential. This is from Israel. It's an Israel Israeli startup. It's about language teaching, language teaching with AI. And of course, you can imagine... Uh, uh, you're talking to a natural language processing chatbot and they understand what you were pronouncing and what questions you had and they're answering on that. So this is totally about a language learning based on AI and uh, very, very successful at the moment. And the Israeli um, actually army is thinking about to apply this uh, for their whole stuff. Right, and coming down to the smart compass down low, Again, um, and I'm sorry for, for mentioning again China, but uh, China is sort of a role model. You might rethink what's happening there and then draw your own conclusions out of that. This is uh, the first smart compass in China, in Xinjiang, by the way. And uh, it was uh, what was happening there. You see the students sitting there in the class. And if you look very closely, you see around each phase some numbers and figures. Well, what is happening there? These are students. These students are in a lecture, like you are now with me together. <laughs> and um, what the camera does is it recognizes the emotions the students have while the lecture is going on. So imagine now I'm talking to you and there's now a camera looking at you and it is detecting your emotions, your maybe your frustrated or you're yawning or you're enthusiastic or whatever and uh, out of that there comes a score and this score is meant for the teacher for the lecture so it's sort of a feedback loop for the teacher how interesting your talk was how enthusiastic the students were reacting that's the official version of that of course, you can turn that system around as well and uh, track the students' emotions as the students' performance. And then suddenly you get a totally different kettle of fish as well. So having that said, um, in connection with consumer AI to citizen AI, there are a lot of ethical questions about using AI in teaching and education, of course. It's about privacy and all that, what's behind that. And is this... AI really AI for good, or is it done and used for something different? And then having that connected then with the token economy, you might uh, have an idea of uh, which direction it could take as well. But it's again, it's uh, AI is a tool, 
And if we are going for the citizen AI, there might be some really in extremely interesting uh, developments happening, which are helping the individual to come along. Okay, from citizen AI, from consumer AI to citizen AI. Then yesterday or the day before, I was talking about the Internet of Things to the Internet of Thinking. Yes, here again, there are tools around. Um, I might start in with a robot. Yes, I might start with a robot. Uh, what you see there on the left-hand side is actually an Arduino project. Arduino is uh, intelligent parts, sensors, and mechanical parts, electromechanical parts. You can put together uh, sets. You can put together. And you can develop all yes. sorts of things out there. You can develop a automated uh, conveyor belt. You can build robots okay. with that. You can build um, uh, cars with that. You can build um, surveillance um, cameras with that. Uh, uh, result, uh, the There's a whole tool set behind that, and uh, it's not uh, really uh, it's sort of affordable. If you think of having a fab lab, for example, I'm a class at, uh, 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 Maran, in the future, this might be an option to have the, the, the sets, and they're actually for school exercises done, the electronic part you see right in the middle. Uh, you see a lot of projects listed there. You can do that with the students together, and they're playing a really experience with this new world of uh, the Internet of Things. On the right-hand side, you see the material that you can buy with that, to the sensors, you can have uh, smart mm. sensors, you have connection plates, whatever mm. you want to have. And that's, uh, again, connected mm. to the stuff I showed you yesterday, okay, okay, okay. the day before yesterday. It's out of fruit. Mm. And uh, they have for so teachers okay. especially a whole page there where you can collect your uh, stuff and put uh, that uh, 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 to now, put get real-life experience for your students. Uh. Down low, it's uh, from the University of Chicago. I was telling you before, um, these are smart sensors you can put on your uh, mm -hmm. buildings, on the streets, wherever you want to put mm -hmm. them, and collect data and provide this data back mm -hmm. to the community. And having things like that running for the students, mm, sure. they will experience very clearly, like yeah, how the, the community library, is changing, or the, how the, the um, library pollution um, is changing, the, or how the drift is changing, and getting from this the, data the, new the, ideas of the, what their the, development is, and uh, just uh, imagine uh, having them sitting all across the country uh, and getting uh, the data uh, together, uh, and the uh, data uh, hub uh, is uh, then uh, uh, Maram uh, College. Uh, just think of the implication you could have, or even to spread it further out to the whole Don Bosco community and see, is Don Bosco maybe the source provider run by the students for uh, environmental data for India? There's a huge leverage in that. And it's done by the University of Chicago, and uh, if you want to connect there, we've got the connections to them, the array of things. Right, from data addiction to data veracity. Again, you can learn. You have tools for that. Uh, one is a very, very simple one. It's uh, ethical hacking from scratch. And this is a book, analog book. And there is a lot of material in there and to understand what uh, ethical hacking is and what does it mean. And then through that, you understand, of course, how data veracity is done. The next one is the virtual cyber school. And this is a very interesting thing. Uh, it's again for free. And you can apply now there. And you can actually have hackers or your students working as hackers. Uh, they, get, they are given challenges. And you can do them their cybersecurity approaches and then try to hack them. And through hacking them, you learn, a, of course, a lot about data veracity and what's all behind. Uh, this project is uh, run in the States at the moment, uh, but I think from all over the world you can link in there and uh, to go with your class there and to understand what it's all about. And then, of course, the skills you develop there, you can use them in your everyday life. You understand what kind of data could be true and which could be untrue. And what do you do to have uh, digital intelligence, how to use your computer and what not to and all that. And of course, um, papers are a resource for that as well. 
For example, the Washington Post is very clear on that, um, and they have a long list of articles about what parents need to teach kids about deepfakes and videos. I told you uh, two days before about this um, page where you can go there and uh, if you put in people that don't exist, you might see what's coming up there and uh, you experience what real data veracity and what the challenges are there behind that. Yes, and uh, build to partner at scale. Yes, how do we put now the whole picture together to have a seamless solution journey for our students? And uh, what will it be for you in Maram College? And uh, I think that is the question now for you. What is your shift? What will be your new learning ecosystem? And while Father Sebastian and I were talking about uh, this, these webinars, of course, there's the impact of getting new ideas started, how the Moram College could further develop on that. And I would like to invite you all to Father Sebastian, of course, and having the knot there, um, to bring now all the ideas together for the Moram College, what could be done and then start to develop maybe the next phase uh, of Don Bosco College 4.0 and see where the shift is taking you, the shift uh, from the incremental curve to the new curve. And if you do so, I've got here one last tool which we use. If you have got now an idea for new ways of teaching, why not pitch it as a professional? Because life is a pitch. We are very often asked, what is really the secret behind the Silicon Valley? Silicon Valley. Of course, you have a lot of uh, explanations for that, like um, Sunshine State and uh, good education, maybe, and, and, and. But the major thing there is in this ecosystem in the Silicon Valley is the sharing. There's one street called University Street. And when you walk down this university, it's very small, it's not long. And you sit down for a cup of coffee. Yeah, it's going on. I promise you, after two minutes, you will have a tap on the shoulder and someone will ask you, um, sorry, sir, uh, I'm, may I interrupt you? Yeah, what? Uh, I would like to pitch an idea to you. And I want to have your feedback on that. Is that all right for the next five minutes? And that's happening. That's happening all day long. There's a walk, the <laughs> Infinity Walk, just up the hills uh, behind Stanford University. When you go there, whatever time on the day, and you go on this infinitive, infinitive walk, you see people's walking, coming up to you, asking you again, the, sorry, sir, may I interrupt you? I've got an idea. Can we just discuss for more? Have you got some time? And sometimes you say, oh, this is you know, no, you not really helpful for me at the moment. Blah, blah, blah. Or, oh, that's an interesting idea. And I think you could think about this and this and this in this context. So this is the daily life routine we have there. And then from there, from this daily pitching, you come to the real pitch sessions. And uh, what we've seen there is a certain structure behind the pitches which were complete and which then succeeded to get venture capital on board. And while listening to all these hundreds and, yeah, you can really say thousands of pitches, we came up with sort of the basic ingredients. And these ingredients I would like to share with you as well. So when you do then the pitch to Father Sebastian or to someone else, you might like to use them to get your pitch professional. It's a tool for a value preposition and it's an acronym. And I will go through very quickly through the let's say, through, through the, the, the letters, so you better understand. It all starts with the C for customer. And to really understand your customer. That helps, uh, for example, if you use an empathy map, as I showed you before, to understand the circumstances of your students and to describe what their needs are 
what gains they have, what pains they have, what they say, what they do, to get that very clear you can use and to understand what is really the need. The need of a student is not to learn algebra. The need of the students might be to solve certain problems. And that might shift the focus. So always start with the customer. Always start with who is in front of you. Going from there to the O. What is the O? The O is the opportunity. What opportunities are around at the moment that I can base on my ideas on, like the opportunities of trends I was just talking about, like the end of distance. And to have then an idea for distance learning is surfing on the wave, on the surf of just the end of distance. So check out the opportunities, which new developments are there which help your idea you want to promote. What kind of developments do you see who is paying into it? If you, if you for yourself, try to develop a surfing wave, it's very hard. So better look for the surf, the waves, which are already there, and put your surfboard on it. So moving from there, so first I start with the customer, then I go to the opportunity, then I go to the solution. What is my solution I'm really looking like? So, so this one is a glove, a cyber glove for this moment. Uh, how does it look? To give my opposite side an idea, it could be a scribble, it could be a very minimal viable product you can actually touch, you can have a prototype, whatever you want to have. You could put a slide together, um, there is, or you, you could put even a movie together to show what your solutions might be and explain it at what stage you, you need what. So start with the customer, continue with the opportunity, show the solution, and then move on to team. Who do you work with? Who is going to be connected on that? Explain why these different people are important for this. And coming back to this um, diversity slide I showed you, as diverse your team is, as bad as it is. But watch out. Elephants, families, divide when they are more than 12. So keep, keep an eye on how big your team might be. But as diverse as possible. So explain who's with you on the team. And then from, move from there to what is the advantage? What's the real advantage from the, the solution we had before to the new solution? What is the difference? And being very precise on that. And last but not least, what kind of results you see? And of course, um, I've seen so many fake business plans in my life. <laughs> I get sort of sick on that. But for the results, you might have an idea of what you want to achieve with. And for having that, you must have a proof of concept before. So it's always about early, quick prototyping and showing the first results already before you really enroll a huge new teaching system. So... When you have now some more new ideas, what teaching might look like uh, with the Moran College in future, you might like to use the CoStar by describing your new ideas and handing them into the Moran College to Father Sebastian and the crew there, and then start to uh, develop a new process of implementing new ideas uh, all around teaching. All right, and this was... The last slide, the co-star slide. Uh, Father Sebastian, you're, we can't hear you. Thank you, Sir John, for your wonderful presentation. Now, I would like to inform you certain things first. Kindly fill up the form after the session. All of you kind enough to fill up the evaluation form after the session. The form will be sent to you. Now we will have some time for clarification after this announcement. Uh, at least five or so can be heard by Sajan and if there is any doubt, clarification, 
those which they we do not understand can be raised at this moment thereafter we ask uh, our father vm thomas once again some concluding remarks and finally there will be a vote of thanks this will be the procedure someone has already raised a, quest a question i don't know he would like to speak by himself mr deben bachaspati nayam he had a question you would like to uh, ask or should i read out if capitalist economy creating huge gap between haves and have nots is driving force for incremental business and if the same incremental business is going to continue in post covid 19 scenario how will it ensure equal share of resources and justice in future mm -hmm. so well, if, if we continue doing it as we did before before covid we will see the results <laughs> and uh, now is a unique time we have by the reset to change the direction and i'm not sure whether it will happen or not but i see signals that it might happen and as the shift i showed you uh, in amsterdam where the city council decided we're going to go for a different world and i see a lot of things happening all around the green new deal which is more about inclusion and more more about the sustainable development i see a fair chance to go there but i can't promise it will i see a lot of uh, movement as well let's go back to normal uh, this might be a, a driving force but at the same time i see the other signals as well and i see and this is important i see big pension funds moving and pension funds are a huge leverage in economics so i'm hopeful that we might use this reset to this new way thank Does you sir answer the question or yes it's working if any doubt is there mr please type down uh, one who has raised the question can reply is here is there sir you can what is I think that is quite clear. Um, Activity from spirituality. Huh? Someone has said we are going to artificial intellectuality from spirituality. <laughs> okay. Um, I was I was at a beautiful conference two years ago in Bangalore. And in this Bangalore conference, uh, we had a table there, uh, a speaker's table, artificial intelligence and art. And that was amazing. There was a singer. And she was singing traditional Indian music. I, I can't. Karnataka's music. And um, she was giving an example there. And uh, good for you that I'm not singing now. But uh, what she was uh, telling us is um, she started with a... an old irish song and i thought well why is this lady starting with an old irish song here uh, and she said well we've had some uh, in the british army some soldiers there irish and they were bringing this irish music to india and after 20 years this irish song sounded like this and uh, she was singing then this with this typical indian melody with it but it was you could still detect the major frame and then she said well around 100 years later there was schumann uh, romantic music was introduced to india as well from uh, the western europe and some people started to play around with it and then she connected this irish song with this indian singing with this schumann and then a new melody came out of that and at the end uh, she was coming up in the um, uh, early 1920s and with some jazz rhythm behind that and then she put that all together and then again co you know connected it with the indish development singing there and it was beautiful and at the end she said well and this is what artificial intelligence does 
It puts pattern together, it learns from each other and develops something new. But to be something really like art, the spirit of God is needed. So there's no replacement of art without the spirit of God. And I think this is one of the connections of that. Um, there's the magic touch comes from somewhere else. Thank you, sir. It's very clear. Anybody else would like to raise any question? Uh, we would like to listen from Dr. Ranjan Kumar Bhera and Pravin Shinde. These two people, some feedback. Dr. Ranjan Kumar Bhera, please, please come online. Yeah, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Good evening to all of you. It is a wonderful exposure to all the participants during this COVID-19. I am extremely happy to get a lot of resources and it is being an eye-opener not only to the people of Manipur or Don Bosco College Maram, but it is the eye-opener to all the learning people throughout the country and throughout the world. I appreciate uh, the resource person who has given in detail for the plan, program, and everything during this lockdown. And we are going to another stage where we are talking about artificial intelligence. And many, many new, new things will be coming up. And I am happy that uh, the resource person has given a lot of insight to all of us. Thank you very much for everything in detail. I appreciate a big salute to Don Bosco College, Mara. Thank you, Dr. Ranjan Kumar Behra. He's the Dean of Studies from St. Joseph University, Dimapur. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, sir, Praveen Shinde. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audible, sir? yes sir. It is audible. It is clear. Yes, actually, it is an uh, excellent presentation, sir. And once again, I am very clear. Actually, before COVID and uh, post COVID, everything world is bit very clear. I really excellent. I would say uh, once again, I thanks to all organizers as well as resource person. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Anybody else would like to come online? Hello. Hello. Now, can I invite Father VM Thomas for his concluding remarks? He lost his connection. Why he lost his connection? Who? Father VM. Tell him to go back. Yeah, he let, opened his mail and he can again connect with you. I think maybe it is his internet connectivity. Hello, Father VM Thomas. May I invite you? Father. Hmm. Father? Uh, kindly wait, he's, uh, he's getting his connectivity. Before, uh, our teachers also can say something. Father, you. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me, Father? Hello. Hello. I can raise my mind and heart and thought in gratitude to Sir Jan Kune. Our short meeting at Bangalore has made a tremendous impress web seminar uh, past three days, sir. 
I knew that you are a man who could accommodate everyone's need because remember that we sat the whole day is giving thanks trying to work out some of those who those things which you told I come in here that school high school in para auto and all that we were trying to probe into areas where we could cooperate in various ways and so that's why i immediately thought when i thought about an international seminar i go to you right away and you said yes a very generous large hearted person and i'm sure i will bring you here to maram that i have told you earlier by all means i will get you here because uh, at least i should show my gratitude for you and how well we can go forward you know he told us about all the trends and tasks and corresponding to that one he has given us the tools and you brought the education teaching and learning after covid beyond covid right at our doorstep but are we ready to accept it because here uh, we are even now confused with a lot of things that is happening but you have given us again that famous breathing space we can breathe because we should not be confused dumbfounded when we are faced with the technology in advance yeah. we can no longer pull back otherwise we will be left behind when you said that china is undertaking so much experiment in artificial intelligence and connected to learning and the schools that was again an eye opener for us and so this is an eye opener to all of us that we cannot remain where we were in the past technology has so much advance learning is today no more talking but learning is doing that's what you are talking about all the applications that you had mentioned most of it is new to us we have to get familiarized students has to get familiarized yet you uh, exposed all this modern advancement in technology e based learning with the unique thoughts as well as lucid mind with german precision on the dot on time everything precise with a global outlook that is wonderful sir we cannot say anything but a very big thanks and namaste to you and yeah so that's from my part from the institution and all of us who have gained from this seminar not only maram don bosco but from all over india people have participated in this over 100 over 105 participants with a very limited time to inform so many gathered and that only really shows people are interested in learning all the more you are at position of the team and developing bringing to a fruitful connection and practical solution to covid and beyond sir once again a grateful heart i will give a large thanks to you uh, now i ask sir vian tom to come online for concluding remarks One second. Yeah. Yeah, I yes, understand. Huh? Yeah, I think yeah, I can last that time. Father Thomas, are we getting online? Somebody else also can speak. Okay. Huh? Uncle. Father. but the thomas is having some problem with his uh, connection it appears okay now 
ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ ഫാദർ ഓക്കെ 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 ഫാദർ ഓക്കെ ഫാദർ അമീൻ Meanwhile, may I remind you once again, kindly fill up the evaluation form which will be sent to you. And certificates will be issued. It may take some time because we are uh, sending personally uh, unprinted form. So don't get worried if it is not sent immediately, but it will be sent in due course of time. Father VM Thomas, are you ready to speak to us? Father VM. Yes, yes, a little more loud. Yeah, yes, Father. Okay. Yeah, a little loud. All right. Yes. Yeah. I lost you all for a while. Jan. I began saying the world is flat, but it looks it is not so flat as yet because of technology. I lost you for a couple of minutes. I have been a hill, not in a hilly area, but though in the heart of a city, and yet lost. But let me say this continuation of Thomas uh, Friedman, <laughs> who visited Bangalore and wrote the famous book, The World is Flat. He went back to the Silicon Valley and found that there were quite a very large number, I am told about 40% of the people working in Silicon Valley are from India. So we need to tap on the so shoulders of many people, but let me, let me ask Father Sebastian the permission to say, we would like to tap on, the sh on your back, on your shoulder and say, we really want to pitch in and do something around. And you're Your three-day webinar, I think, has been a real eye-opener for me personally. I'm sure for all the participants of this webinar, the teaching and training, COVID and beyond, where he spoke about the trends, yeah. the tasks, That's and the good. tools. Yeah. I, I would honestly admit, you have given us a direction. You have given us keys. You have given us guidelines. And I feel so very optimistic today, more than ever. I think you're giving us some kind of a path for rebuilding a better world. I think that's, I feel so good about this. And you have so seeds of hope in all of us that we can build a better humanity, a better society. Humanity, as, I mean, people you have consistently said in various ways, and I like the fantastic concept of consumer AI to citizenship Yeah, people are not to be managed. People are not to be measured. People are not just to be used for profit, but rather we need to build on humanity. We need to build a spirit of inclusivity, which I thought was so beautiful. Work for common good, and in such a short period of time, you yourself shared so much knowledge, resources, to the best tools that you have shared. Now, Now, these were sort of inaccessible to us, though they exist, but most of us are not aware of these existing tools. Be doing the work that you're doing with the very high profile companies across the world, Broadwise and BMW and whatever that you have heard about, I think bringing to education and bringing to morale is part of that humanity, that citizenship AI. I am not so sure because you work with those very big companies. I wonder whether, are we, are we not also thinking about a civilization that needs to downshift? Maybe, because for all the consumption, we need to reveal itself. I think our focus has been so much on consumption, leisure, uh, let's say control, stimulation, personal choice. I mean, I think we, If there is a too much of an acceleration of speed in trying to get to everything in such a short period of time. And I think Ivan Toffler, many years ago, wrote that book, Future Shock. 
and I think we are shocked right now. We are unable to absorb all these changes, accelerated changes in such a short period of time. And this is more true of India and much more true of Iran, I believe, because the digitalization has come into this country just in 10, 15 years, while in Germany, in, in Europe and America, it, it was in maybe over a period of 30, 40 years. But in such a, at these young people today are taking in such a short period of time impossible. Uh, I, I must comment very highly about you because you have insisted on moving from silo solutions to seamless solutions and not to anymore return to the selfishness of the past and have a selfish indifference. You're speaking of eliminating inequalities healing, injustice, enabling everyone to breathe. You have really said in many ways, we have failed in our responsibility. And uh, uh, we have to return to become guardians, stewards of the earth. We have polluted it, endangered it, and our very lives. And I'm so happy that you are so beautifully brought to us our interconnectedness. Course, that, that we are interdependent. I think this is what Toby has taught us. Interdependent. And I wish some people, at least some individuals, individuals, not those ones you refer to in high power. I, I can I can imagine the ones you are referring confidence, but pretending to have a confidence, but ignorant, terribly ignorant of the world. I wish their ears are open and their eyes are open to understand the new reality. We to face similar situations. Uh, I don't want to mention the places. Anyway, it is scary to hear about things that you have said. But at the same time, I'm so happy that you spoke about that uh, emotional um, empathy. Read the empathy. And uh, I, I don't want to be too long, but I just want to say that was really touched me when you spoke about empathy here. Think, feel, see, understand the pain, understand the gains of others, and then collaborate. And of course, your acronym co-star will remain with me and with all of us. That will be the, the approach we shall make for the future. And on a personal note, I would say this, you have a challenge, Bosco, to be a candidate hub. I am taking a, a small